Hi, I'm Huell Hauser. Welcome to another edition of Crossroads. You know, about 500 to 1,000 years ago, a group of Native Americans crossed over and settled on the western side of the southern Sierras. Trading with other groups of Indians on both sides of the Sierras, they lived off the bounty of the land, which is the present-day location of the Big Creek Hydro Project. This story is about Edison helping to preserve the heritage of the Monache Indians. These intricate baskets and outstanding basket weaving skills that are handed down through the generations are part of their culture. The Western Mono people are today's ancestors of the Monache, a proud people, holding strong to age-old tradition, tradition that Edison's Tom Taylor helps to preserve. I met up with Tom surveying along the Big Creek transmission lines. Now, Tom, just exactly what is your job with Edison? What do you do? Well, I work in the Environmental Affairs Division as an archaeologist. We're out here in an area we know as the Jose Basin area, which is just up the hill from Big Creek Powerhouse Number 3. My job is to come out here and, and catalog the various Indian artifacts, archaeological sites, and report back to the various regulatory agencies that have some jurisdiction over the things that Edison does. For example, these are, are what we refer to as bedrock mortars. Mm -hmm. They're, in fact, here we have a, an example we brought in. Yeah, of, you brought this along. This hadn't been just lying here. No, that's right. <laughs> now, usually you don't find these out here like that, particularly in an area that's as well-traveled as this one is. Now, what are all these holes? Because the whole top of this rock is covered with these holes. Well, these holes here were actually dug by the Indians to grind the flour they used to, to make their, essentially their bread. They used the trees you see around here, the oak trees that produce the acorns. They would take the acorns, they would, they would grind them up in these With bedrock these. mortars, right? Got you like this. Pounding just like that. Now, why is it important to preserve these things here as they are? Well, there's a lot of reasons for doing that. Um, to someone like myself, who who's essentially sees himself as a scientist, they have some real scientific value. They tell us a lot about the kinds of the things that people did that, that lived in this area, the Menachee, the Western Mono, and, and the other Indians that may have been here before them. They also have a great deal of traditional value, traditional meaning, importance to the descendants of the Western Mono that still reside in this area. Since the early 50s, Edison has recognized that there were Native American resources within the Big Creek area. And protecting Indian regions dating back many generations is important because they reveal so much about the past. There's people down the hill that can come up here and tell you that this is where their mother lived. This is where their grandparents actually came and collected the various things that they made a living from. Mm -hmm. The things they used to make their baskets, the things they used for food, the things they used to build their houses with, things they used to cure their children and themselves. It was all right out here in nature. Nature provided everything for them. Although Big Creek was built decades ago, Edison facilities like the transmission lines or access roads periodically require maintenance. And to protect Indian areas from maintenance activities, Tom identifies historical sites, including the plants and the trees, which are essential to the Western Mono's way of life. Now, regulatory agencies require Edison to file reports, but Tom goes the extra mile by having a personal interest in Native American history. To obtain further insight into the Indian culture, Tom meets with the local Big Creek residents, like Margaret Beatty, a Monache descendant. How important do you think it is that this whole area and, and all of these wonderful artifacts and things be preserved? Well, if it's preserved and we can come in here and get our material. So this really has a very practical application. If you didn't have these, these plants and these things preserved, you wouldn't be able to carry on these traditions. That's right. So it's very important to me. Margaret, I'd like to thank you and Tom both for explaining to all of us how important it is to save all of this, not only for the history that it represents in the past, but for the applications it has for the present and, more importantly, for future generations. Until next time, I'm Huell Hauser for Crossroads.